Hey y'all, it's Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing the Jan January book tag. Obviously, this was created by Jan from Jan Agaton. If you would have told me the last time I did this tag that Jan would actually acknowledge my existence regularly, I would have been like, no way. <laughs> oh shit, we're crooked. I can never tell if it's my camera that's crooked or if it's because my shelves dip. So just bear with me because I can't tell. This is just a series of 10 questions. They're not all questions, 10 prompts, uh, just to go over the previous year, the upcoming year, just kind of gauge where we're at. So we're just gonna knock this out real quick. Um, and we need to film this quickly because uh, to get this beautiful angle that you're seeing, I have to sit on my feet and they're gonna fall asleep soon. So, number one, what is the first and last book that you read last year? First book I read, A Certain Hunger by Chelsea Summers. Uh, you would think that since we both share the name Chelsea that this would have been a win, um, but it wasn't. Looking back, I gave this a three star, but um, it, it really should have been a two. Though I will say that even though that was the first of 400 books to be read last year, it still sticks with me. Deep Fried Bubonic Plague will live with me forever, unfortunately. Yeah. The last book I read, which was just a couple days ago, <laughs> Scott Pilgrim, Volume 2. We're following Scott Pilgrim, where he is like a ninja fighter, uh, in Canada and he meets this girl Ramona Flowers and they have a connection and he has to defeat her seven evil exes in order to date her and the volumes just kind of span that journey. Um, highly recommend the movie. Also highly recommend the soundtrack. The soundtrack is phenomenal. I love it. Number two, do you know what your first read of the new year is going to be? Yes, yes I do. I actually started it this morning and that is Brainworms. I read Tell Me I'm Worthless last year and it blew me away. So I obviously had to pick this up and like we kind of match. It's a moment. Um, I don't know anything about this. I'm going in completely blind. I'm assuming that it's going to fuck me up. I've like barely started. I'm on page 20. Even the first line of this had me going, ugh. I'll, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Let's see what we have. The sea, if it was the sea, was the consistency of spit. Oh, uh. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm excited to read this. I really am. I don't know what it says about me that I'm starting the year off trying to traumatize myself, but here we are. <laughs> Number three, share three reading goals for this year. Uh, I don't really do a lot of goals. After reading 400 books last year and essentially being deemed Chelsea Two Star, I do want to be more intentional with what I'm reading. Um, I basically go into everything blind and there's nothing wrong with that, but I also will pick things up just because they're available on Libby. So I do want to be more intentional with the stuff I'm picking up, maybe not go into things so blindly and definitely not pick things up just because they're there. I also want to read down my physical TBR, including Brainworms. I'm at 66 owned books, which I think is a great number. Like it hasn't been that low in a couple of years, um, but I would like to prioritize those more as opposed to constantly like digging into the new releases that are going to come out this year. I also want to utilize my Kindle, my beautiful Kindle that I invested so much money in <laughs> last month and just look at it. God, it's gorgeous. I'm obsessed with this thing, so this shouldn't be a problem. Um, but I do want to utilize Libby more for eBooks, utilize KU since starting in March, I'll actually have to start paying for that. Um, and I just, I want to be a Kindle girly and I feel like I'm well on my way. I also want to annotate my favorites. So I've done several purges over the past few months of my books and I basically have them whittled down to if, if I've read them, they're favorites. So they're gonna be ones that I plan on holding on to. Um, and I would like to do more rereading in the new year and I wanna annotate them. Uh, my bookish besties have been kind enough to send me 
all these beautiful colored tabs and I have highlighters up the wazoo. And I really just wanna start utilizing those materials and just really delving into the text of my favorite books. Whether I do that though is another story entirely, just because for me it's really time consuming and sometimes I'm just like sucked into the book and just want to enjoy my time. So we'll see, that's like bottom of the list, but like I would love to be an annotation girly. Number four is to share three anticipated titles. Um, I always forget that all these anticipated questions are on here. Um, I am not an anticipated girly. Like I really had to think hard with this one. I let books find me. I don't really anticipate things that often. So obviously first on the list is the next Crescent City book, House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Maas. I am currently in my reread. I am about to start my reread of House of Sky and Breath. So there's that. I've technically never finished that book because I got spoiled when it came out and just didn't see the point in finishing the last hundred pages. I wanna dive into this book on January 30th. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get an Audible free trial so I can just listen to it on audio. And if I enjoy it to just buy the Barnes and Noble exclusive paperback edition when those release, I don't wanna be buying this book six times. Next on the list is The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I don't know if this is going to be something I'm going to vibe with, but it's Lee Bardugo, so I have to pick it up. She is an auto buy author for me at this point. And the last on the list, which I'm not even sure is going to be released this year, but I really want it to be, is Electo the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is the next book, book four in the Lock Tomb series, and I'm dying to get my hands on it. Um, I would like to have at least a release date because I will most definitely be needing to do a reread. Um, Gideon the Ninth and Harold the Ninth specifically are very taxing on the brain, so I need to reread those for sure before I go into that one. But I really hope it gets released this year. Like, really, really hope it gets released this year. Number five is which goals did you reach or did not reach in 2023? Again, I'm not really a goals girly. I set my Goodreads goal to 100 books, which I definitely did a few times over. Um, so I that, you know, that was a goal I hit. I hit it four times. <laughs> the goal is to always read my physical TBR. Um, I always fail. I always fail. I also wanted to get back onto YouTube in 2023. I had abandoned it a few times in the past and I did that. I came back in March and except for like October and November-ish, I was pretty consistent the entire year through. So I guess that is a, a check in the reached <laughs> column. Number six is 2024 releases you have no desire to pick up. Again, I don't really know what's coming out. Um, but I guess if I had to pick something, if Rebecca Ross is publishing anything in 2024, I won't be picking it up. Um, it, it is official. It is 1000% official. I will never pick up any more of her books, whether they're backlist or current. I won't do it. So if she's publishing this year, that's going to be a no for me. Number seven is reading habits that you would like to change in the new year. My biggest thing is I only want to buy books if I'm going to read them immediately. Um, I cannot count how many times I've sent Biebs out on release day because I needed whichever books in my hand right away just for them to sit on my shelves for weeks, months, years. Um, I just, I really want to get back to, I, I want to be intentional with my buying. So if I'm going to the store to buy a book, it's because I'm going to start that book right then. Uh, I feel like there could be a few of them this year, uh, but I want to be very selective with it. I don't want to bring books in just for them to sit here and collect us. Like why buy them right away if I'm not going to read them right away? So that's, that's the main thing. I also want to DNF more. Like, I feel like I DNF quite a bit now, but I want to DNF more. Basically, I want to retire Chelsea Two Star. Like, if I am not vibing with something, if I'm not enjoying it, if I'm hate reading it, I just need to stop. I just need to stop. I don't want to be Chelsea Two Star anymore. <laughs> 
Number eight is adaptions you're excited for. Again, I don't anticipate things. I can't even think of anything that's coming out. Uh, a hopeful, I guess, would be season three of Heartstopper. I, I would like someone else to pick up Shadow and Bone so that can continue. Can that be an anticipated thing? Can we make that happen, please? Number nine is favorite bookish memory from last year. Um, there are a few. I feel like one of the major highlights is Ryan LaSala just acknowledging my existence. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, Ryan LaSala is the author of one of my favorite books of all time, The Honeys. We talk to each other on Instagram every now and again, and he is just like the sweetest human, and he's always so kind to me. I read Beholder like with him, like I started it and I was like, hey, I'm starting Beholder. And like I was talking to him the entire time I was reading that book and that that was fun. Also, I hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. What? <laughs> it happened back in the summer and I'm still just like geeking out over it. It's such a great accomplishment for me. And just thank you so much for being here. I, I really, really appreciate it. It's been a bookish good time in 2023. That's for sure. And last but not least, we have number 10, which is, are you carrying over any books from last year that you still want to continue with this year? Uh, I came into the new year with two current reads on my Goodreads, and I see myself finishing both of them, but whether or not it happens this year is another story entirely. Um, one of them is House of Leaves. I started this in 2021, um, I, I'm to the point now where I couldn't tell you what page I'm actually on. Like I'm, I'm annotating this as I go. So technically I'm on page 142, but if you flip it over to the back, I've also got tabs in the back end. So I, I don't know exactly how far I am. I see myself finishing this someday. I just don't know if 2024 is going to be that time. And the other current read I have is Arcanum Unbound. This is a bind up of short stories from the Cosmere. I am slowly making my way through it. I think I'm about to start War Warbreaker. Is that the next one? Um, but basically I've read one story out of this so far. Um, I have like the reading list of when you're supposed to read these, like which stories to read in between which books. So I don't know when I'll finish this. I don't know when I'll finish The Cosmere. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying myself enough to continue. So who knows, but this is technically a current read, but I, I have no idea when I'm actually going to get through all these stories. I hear you, Soup. I hear you. But that was it. That was the January book tag. Thanks again to Jan for creating this tag. Thanks again to Jan for suffering through another one of my videos. I really appreciate you. Uh, please give this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave me some comments down below. Do you have better answers for these questions than I do? I'm sure you do. Let me know. Please tell me all the things. I'd love to talk to you down there and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye. Sitting like that was a mistake. It was a mistake.